Have you ever wondered how suspension systems work? What's the engineering behind it? And what components are involved? Well, if you're interested and you wanna know more, watch this video. Hey everyone, I'm MJ Sanga, the creative engineer, and welcome to today's video. So before we get into the components and the engineering design of suspense systems, why don't we first learn about how they work and what engineering principles are involved. And to start with, we need to know what a suspension system is. A simple definition of a suspension system is an integral component of a vehicle that serves multiple critical functions, primarily aimed at enhancing vehicle stability, handling comfort, and safety. It consists of various mechanical components that work together to absorb shocks, vibrations, and impacts from the road, allowing the vehicle to maintain proper contact with the surface while providing a comfortable ride for passengers. A more simpler way to put it is that it's the part of the vehicle that allows you to drive smoothly through an easy roads without feeling any discomfort. So then, how does a suspension system work? and what are the basic components of this system? Well, in the heart of a suspension system, there's an intricate web of mechanical components that work harmoniously to ensure a smooth and controlled ride. One of these components is the control arms. This is basically the backbone of a suspension system. They also have another name and they're known as A-arms. And no, A does not stand for Avengers. These robust pieces connect the wheel to the chassis, providing support and guiding the wheel's vertical movement. Control arms play a vital role in maintaining proper wheel alignment. This allows controlled steering and stability during harsh driving conditions. Another one of the vital components is the spring. Now let's bounce to the topic of springs. These are the suspension's primary source of elasticity. Springs absorb and distribute the impact of road irregularities, ensuring a comfort ride as you drive. There are many types of springs, but the common types used in a suspension system are the core springs, which are tightly wound cores of steel, and leaf springs, which are made of stacked flexible strips of metal. These springs determine the vehicle's ride height and support its weight. Another vital component we have are the shock absorbers. You can picture the shock absorbers as the suspension system silent heroes. These work to control the oscillation of the springs. Dampers regulate the speed at which the springs compress and extend, reducing excessive swaying or bouncing. This technology is essential not only for ride comfort, but also for maintaining tire contact with the road, ensuring optimal traction and braking. Another one of the components are the anti-roll bars. You could say that our suspension symphony could not be complete without roll bars. They're also known as sway bars, by the way. These components connect the left and right of the suspension together. Because of this, they counteract the body roll during cornering. Because they distribute the lateral force evenly, anti-roll bars enhance stability and responsiveness ensuring a controlled and confident drive. Now, these are just a few of the suspension system's core components, but they play a vital role in maintaining stability and enhancing responsiveness as you drive. Now, before we create a 3D model of this suspension system, I don't want to dampen your mood, but we're gonna explore dampers a bit further. Now, the reason why I'm focusing on this subject is because damping is a crucial part of the suspension system. It determines how the vehicle will handle bumps and maintains stability during cornering. Imagine you're driving down a bumpy road without any damping. It would be an uncomfortably chaotic experience. Damping achieved through shock absorbers or dampers transforms this chaotic energy into a controlled motion. The secret lies in fluid or gas filled chambers within the dampers that dissipate kinetic energy, ensuring your ride remains smooth and composed. Now, dampers do come in different flavors, each suited for different driving conditions and cars. We have hydraulic dampers, twin tube dampers, monotube dampers, and electronically controlled dampers. Yes, there are a lot of dampers. 
Each type offers a unique way of managing the suspension's movement, allowing for adjustments in real time to adapt for changing road surfaces and driving styles. Another reason why tuning the dampers is important is mostly for comfort. Yes, even though you have leather seats, it's still important to have dampers in your suspension system. This is because fine-tuning the damping forces on your suspension system achieves the perfect balance between responsiveness and comfort. So engineers fine-tune the damping settings to ensure that the suspension effectively absorbs road imperfections while maintaining optimal tire conduct and vehicle control. It's a delicate dance between the aims that provide a plush ride without compromising stability. Properly tuned damping ensures that your vehicle maintains its intended handling characteristics, especially during sudden maneuvers or cornering. The science of damping isn't just about a smooth ride, it's about elevating your driving experience to a whole new level. So there you have it, a glimpse of the intricate world of damping and its effects on our suspension system. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please hit a like and subscribe for more of my upcoming video. So now we know the basic components of the suspension system, why damping is important. Let's deep dive into the right comfort of a suspension. In engineering, the right comfort refers to the ability of a vehicle to isolate passengers from road disturbances, vibrations, and shocks, ensuring that they arrive at their destination without feeling every bump along the way. The core of the ride comfort lies between the spring rates and the damping levels. Like I said, shock absorbers ensure that the springs do not overbounce or sway as you're driving. The spring rates will just determine how stiff or soft the suspension feels. This will determine how much impact force is transmitted to the vehicle. Damping, as I discussed earlier, controls the speed of the spring movement, ensuring that we have a controlled and smooth response. Engineers must consider the variety of road surfaces from smooth highways to bumpy back roads. So then, tuning the suspension to adapt to different terrains is a delicate art that involves finding the sweet spot between responsiveness and isolation. These are just a few of the things that are considered when designing a suspension system for your car. It can either be an off-road vehicle or an on-road vehicle, but these things are taken into consideration to ensure that the suspension system provides a comfortable, smooth, and safe journey as you're driving. So then, now we design our suspension system. But as an engineer, when we always design something, we have to solve a problem. So let's say we're designing a suspension system for company A. They want to produce a suspension system for a minivan. And let's say they hire engineer A, which is me, to design a CAD model of their suspension system. Now, the reason why they want to design the CAD model is to get FEA results. FEA stands for Finite Element Analysis. It is a powerful simulation technique that allows engineers to analyze the stress, strain, deformation, heat transfer, friction, and so on of a mechanical part before it is manufactured. This helps us see the weaknesses in our design and helps us make edits before it's taken to the manufacturer to design a prototype. So there are a lot of components needed in the suspension system. However, instead of me designing each component and putting it into the video, I'll just show you an assembly of the component so that you can just see my SOLIDWORKS skills. By the way, I use SOLIDWORKS for this design and for the FEA simulation, I used ANSYS Workbench. So enjoy this assembly and hit a like if you're enjoying it.
So this is a 3D model of our suspension system. As you can see, I added color to give it a bit more flair, but at the moment we are not gonna focus on the color, but we're gonna focus on the FEA analysis. By the way, you may be wondering, what is FEA and what are all these engineering abbreviations that have been said? If you wanna learn more about finite element analysis, you can watch this video. But for the sake of many of you, I'll just explain the basics of FEA. Finite element analysis is a powerful simulation technique that enables us to analyze the structural behavior of our 3D models. This is done by dividing our complex structures into finite elements, enabling us to analyze how they respond to external forces. This technology has revolutionized engineering design, making it possible to optimize components before they even hit the physical world. Now, finite element analysis has various applications. It allows us to evaluate our designs, predict failure points, and improve performance of our designs before we can physically manufacture it. In our case, finite element analysis will help us gain insight on how our suspension components withstand the external forces of the road. This will ultimately guide us to design a more robust and efficient system. So now that we've learned about finite element analysis and we've designed our part, we need to now prepare the model for this finite element analysis method. So before running our finite element analysis method, we need to prepare the 3D model by converting it to a step file. We then upload it into the software and prepare the 3D model again by meshing and assigning material properties. So we can say that for the entire suspension system, the entire material used for each component except the tires is steel. By the way, for all the engineers out there, you can let me know in the comments if I've made a few errors in my finite element analysis. Now it's time to run our analysis. So after we've added the needed loads and variables for our analysis, we will then check on our results to see how the stress and deformation of the suspension system is. The results given will show us any weak points that will be there in the suspension system. Because of these results, we can then go back to our drawing board and edit a few of the designs to improve the strength of the design. And then we'll run another analysis to see if the results are the same or better. If we're okay with our design, we can then go back to the client, show them the results, show them the design, and if they like it, they can then go to the manufacturer to produce a prototype, and this prototype can be tested in the real world to see if the results are as accurate as possible. Usually in this day and age with the advancement of technology, finite element analysis has proven to have accurate results over designs. And there you have it, an engineering viewpoint of suspension systems. We talked about the basic components, damping, the ride comfort, the 3D model design, the finite element analysis, our results, and the conclusion. So, if you really enjoyed this video and you want to know more, you can like, subscribe, and you can watch my other videos. Also, if you have any car junkie friends who like cars, you can send this video to them so that they can know a little bit about suspension systems. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day and see you in my next upcoming video.